our film opens with a murder. Oh wait, I mean a self-murder. Apparently this guy jumps from a building and he is Harper's husband. And it's now been a while since that happened. And we now see Harper going to the countryside to get some fresh air and get away from city life. And she booked this really large estate with really great gardens and like wide open spaces. It's pretty cool. And when she gets there, she sees this really big apple tree. She grabs an apple, takes a bite out of it. And then she's greeted by Joffrey, the caretaker of the estate. He seems very helpful and he carries all her bags, does all the work and he tries to be as hospitable as possible. And they have a bit of an awkward moment when he inquires about her husband because her name is still Mrs. Merlot. And she tells him that she hasn't gotten around to changing it. She doesn't tell him that her husband, you know, self-deleted. And after Joffrey leaves, Harper makes a video call to Riley. Riley's like her best friend, and she seems very encouraging. She tells her to just move on and forget about James, who was her husband. And she tells her to take time for herself and just really unwind, you know? And when she goes upstairs to unpack, we see that Harper is still haunted by the memories of her husband. And she starts to remember all the arguments and bad times that they had for some reason. She was never really happy in the marriage. It's been horrible for quite a while, mainly due to James's aggressiveness and the day of the incident she actually told him that she wanted a divorce and he was just begging her to give him another chance and when Harper refused he threatened her by saying that I'm gonna press delete on my life if you do that he didn't say it that way but you get the point and now that he did press delete it's on her conscience and she feels like she's responsible so that was what her marriage was like basically and here in the countryside Harper tries to have as much fun as possible it starts raining when she was walking and she gets inside of this tunnel and she starts singing and she's having fun and she sees this man at the other end of the tunnel and all of a sudden he starts running toward her. Of course this terrifies her and she runs out of the tunnel and then she ends up in the woods and she gets lost. She doesn't know where to go from here. And then she finds this field, like an open landscape field, and she notices this weird guy. And he's like absolutely naked, just standing at a distance, staring at her. And she gets terrified by this as well, and she somehow manages to run and find her house. And the following day, she calls Riley, she gives her a tour of the house, and she tells her what happened in the woods. And as she was telling her, she spots the man in the apple garden again, and his face is all scratched up and bloody. Harper immediately hangs up the phone and she calls the police to report this and when she remembers that the back door was open, she rushes over there to close it. But this naked dude tries to hurt her by inserting his hand through the slot and just tries to grab her and stuff. Ugh, it was so creepy. And then we see another flashback of Harper and her husband where he throws a punch at her because she spoke to Riley about their marriage. And the naked man at her door gets arrested by the cops. And the creepy thing is, the arresting officer has the same face as the naked man and as Joffrey. The caretaker and a female officer tells her that this man is homeless and he probably escaped from some kind of shelter and he's kind of harmless to be honest he's just a little crazy and the next morning she goes to church and she starts sobbing thinking about her husband James and she remembers how she threw him out after he punched her and a priest notices her crying but instead of comforting her like a priest should he just walks away but after she leaves the church and this kid called Samuel calls her a stupid bee the priest comes over and tells her that he saw her inside the church and now he's ready to listen to her concerns and without much thought she tells the pastor what happened apparently James never really hit her before and that was the first time he's did it and that's when she threw him out and he tried to get inside her flat by breaking into the flat above her and they actually locked eyes just before he fell from the building and died and she doesn't know whether he did it on purpose or if it was an accident. And the priest actually tells her that she's kind of responsible for his death because she didn't give him a chance to apologize. Harper gets super offended by this and she curses at him and leaves. And meanwhile, the naked man is at an abandoned railroad where he cuts his forehead with his long claws and inserts a leaf in the gap. And later that night, Harper goes to a nearby pub and she meets Joffrey. And this is the weirdest thing. Everybody that she's met in this place has the same face. They just have different clothes and they're all different ages. But it's the same face. And the police come to Joffrey and they tell him that they arrested the naked man in his house. And he's pretty surprised to hear this because he was not aware of the intrusion. And they also tell Jeffrey and Harper that they've let the naked man go because they don't even think that he's a risk. Harper is very upset by this because this dude is stalking her. And 
she tells the police this, but they tell her to just call them if anything happens. And something does happen. When she's walking back home, she gets followed by the same naked man. And Harper gets very frustrated. She calls her friend Riley. She tells her everything about how the police are completely ineffective and how they can't arrest her stalker who's very creepy. And Harper just feels like she should pack up and just leave. But Riley reminds her that she took this trip because she's here to heal herself from everything that's happened. And she can't stop that because of some homeless weirdo. And Riley even offers to come and stay with Harper so that she feels more safe. And just as Harper was telling her the address, the phone cuts off. Harper calls her back and tries to tell her the address again, but the phone cuts off once more. And then when she tries to text her, she gets this weird message from her that says that she already knows where she is and that she's a stupid bee. And just then, she looks outside the window and she sees this policeman just standing there. When she goes down to talk to him, he doesn't say anything. He just remains silent. And all of a sudden, the lights begin to flicker and the cop vanishes into thin air. And then she sees all the apples falling from the tree and then one of the pub's customers chases her. Harper gets inside her house and she locks the door and she notices that somebody has shattered the house's window. And on the other hand, the same man is now running from the other side of the house. Harper gets terrified and she pulls out a knife to confront this man. But just then, the doors burst open and Joffrey comes inside. And he tells her that he came over to check up on her because she was screaming. And she tells him that somebody broke the windows and somebody's inside the house. But when Jeffrey inspects the window, he sees a dead crow. And he even goes outside to check if there's anybody there, but there was no one. And all of a sudden, the lights begin to flicker again and Joffrey disappears and the naked man reappears on the lawn again. And this time, he has a bunch of leaves on his face and also a branch. He then blows this dandelion at Harper, causing her to fall into this trance, and then she walks inside and she shuts the door, but the man pulls his hand inside and again tries to hurt Harper. And she's now had enough of this, and she's super terrified, so she stabs him with a knife. But the man pulls down his hand, slicing it in half. And thinking now that maybe she could be safe, she goes inside the kitchen and she finds that kid that's called her stupid Samuel. And his hand is also sliced in half and he flaunts it around her and tells her that she really hurt him. And then he asks her to play hide and seek again. And having no choice, she locks herself in a room and starts counting to 10. And when she gets to 10, the doors open and the priest enters the room with also his hand slashed in half. And this dude gets very creepy. He starts telling her about his thoughts about her. He starts describing all these disgusting scenes. And he tells her that she's this virtuous creature created only for pleasure. And then he tries to, you know, force her into giving him some. But Harper stabs him as well. And she runs away from the house. She gets inside of her car and she accidentally hits Joffrey. And she doesn't kill him. He actually gets up and he drags her out of her own car. He gets inside and he drives away. But as she was walking away from the house, she noticed Joffrey approaching her in a very fast car and she runs back inside the house because she knew he was gonna crash into her. But Joffrey loses control of the car and he crashes into a stone wall. Next we see Harper lying in a garden very wounded and then we see the naked man again but this time he's covered in all green and then he begins to get pregnant and his belly starts to grow and he eventually gives birth to a young adolescent male in his own form. And get this, it becomes weirder than that when the boy that he gave birth to also starts giving birth. And he gives birth to the priest. And when Harper sees this, she becomes insanely terrified and she rushes inside. And the now newborn priest starts following her. And he's also pregnant and he gives birth to Joffrey. And like all of us, Harper is confused AF. And Joffrey now gives birth to her husband, who's completely naked and covered in blood like a newborn. And he sits on the sofa and she sits next to him. And she's now so tired of all this nonsense and she asks him what he wants from her and he tells her that all he wants is her love. And all we see next is Riley arriving at the house in the morning. And she sees Harper's car, which crashed into the stone wall because of Joffrey. And when the pregnant Riley walks inside, she sees her friend just staring at this small leaf. And when she sees her, she gets up and she just smiles at her before the screen fades to black. And that is pretty much how the movie ends, boys and girls. Leave a like, leave a comment, and if you ever see a naked man chasing you around a garden, call the cops. Yeah, I will see you guys on the next recap. Bye.